The Honorable Prime Minister. Uh, speaker, I leave of the chair to uh, uh, make a response to a series of questions asked by the member for Wynama Green yesterday on the law and order issues in our country, uh, especially pertaining to uh, triggered by the uh, atrocities uh, caused by Sikkim and Kalkin tribesmen's uh, uh, tribal warfare up there in, in uh, Enga province. If I could get your leave to respond to the questions. Leave granted. Make your speech. <coughs> Mr. Uh, Acting Speaker, uh, question number one from the uh, member was that what is your government's policy in combating law and order situation and tribal welfare in the country? Uh, a quick response to this one. Uh, our government's policy uh, is a better law and order situation in our country. Uh, it is in any government's interest, just like it is in our government's interest to ensure law and order is improved in our country. And I want to give that answer <coughs> straight up. Uh, second question is, can the Prime Minister inform the Parliament and the people of this country what has this government done so far in combating law and order situations and the tribal welfare in the country? I want to... Uh, <coughs> Uh, answer this question by giving assurance to the member and to this house and to our country that despite us having only 6,300 policemen on strength uh, uh, today, uh, we are trying our absolute best to ensure they are resourced and to put fire out in uh, where law and order problem prevails and to ensure the rest of our country is maintained in as law and order is concerned. Uh, our own go government's <coughs> focus is to ensure training our police is being run all the way until we build our police force to a 10,000 men police. Uh, today, as I speak, 500 police uh, recruits are being trained in Bomana. Uh, uh, the previous administration tried to bring back a training in around 2018. It started there, uh, but that is to ramp up our police men and strength. 6,300 policemen against a backdrop of over 12 million people is a ratio disproportionate. You look at one policeman to over 20,000 people. And we're working to ensure we ramp up training. I want to give assurance to this house. Training will not be like an academic calendar year training where you start training in March and you finish in September. Uh, we want to have training that is running all the time. The uh, seventh question, what, what level of resource, financial and equipment and wind power has been expanded and deployed so far? I want to indicate uh, this year budget, over 200 million kina has been put to police. Last year budget, over 200 million kina has been given to police. Combined with the BSA we've signed with the Australian government, we're looking at uh, this year alone and going forward close to a billion kina worth of resources. In the medium term, they'll be mobilized to get police training, police resource, police equipment uh, being, uh, being given support, CIS support, uh, measurable services support, so that it, within the life of this medium term, uh, MTDP4, we get to make some serious progress in the law and justice sector in our country, including police capacity built up. And I want to give assurance to our country, our government is not sitting back waiting. Modernization of police is taking place as we speak. The police uh, uh, commissioner has been instructed, every police recruit coming out will sign a loyalty of oath to the state. Uh, instruction has been given, no boy, no smoke, no beer for your probation period. We want to have good ethic policemen. Uh, Mr. Deputy Speaker, Acting Speaker, third question he asked, can the Prime Minister inform Parliament and our people as to how many of those murderers and so-called warlords have been arrested and brought to justice? And if, if not, then why not? I want to give uh, an assurance to uh, the member and all of us that some arrests have been made, as I did indicate, on some perpe uh, 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 perpetrators of those uh, crimes, but not all arrests have been made as yet. Not all arrests have been made as yet. Uh, police capacity, uh, part of the reason why, uh, people harboring crimes. But I want to indicate to this House, every police station throughout our country has a registry of all cause of troubles in our country. Whether it's trouble fight or any offense, every OB book in our country has notation of every cause or problem in our country. You can run, you can run, you can run, but Eventually, the rule of law will catch up with you. The arm of law will catch up with you. Tari Police Station, Wabek Police Station, Wabnumanda Police Station, uh, Hagen Police Station, Mendy Police Station, right world. And I want to give assurance that uh, some arrests have been made. In Hela Province, I know few who are now serving behind bars. In Baisu, uh, in, 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 in Buyebi, 
Uh, and so some arrests have been made, not all have been made. Uh, question number four, can the Prime Minister also inform this parliament as to what is the level of combat readiness of our military since they have been engaged in a state of emergency operations or call out throughout operations through a call out orders in Hela and Anger province in the last 10 years. Uh, I want to assure this house that our military uh, that has been engaged to go and work with police in those call out operations uh, has taken place without compromising our sovereign state of readiness of our military. As always, one battalion of our PNG Defense Force kept in rest awaiting. Uh, this question comes from a, a leader who knows exactly that uh, our sovereign nations uh, need to be re in, in operational readiness in the event anything else happen. I want to give assurance to the leader that even in the last 10 years, we've never compromised. Uh, at least one battalion is kept at rest uh, all the time as we did rotation between the three battalions that continues to assist in maintenance of law and order in our resource project areas. Question number five, what is the level of level of uh, force readiness of a police force to combat law and order situation and trouble fights which are spiraling out of control in our country. Uh, all of us know uh, in the weaknesses that we have in our police force, I just want to say thank you also. I want to say thank you also to uh, members of our mobile squad, especially. Uh, even in the middle of the night when they are called for duty, uh, they are uplifted from their uh, post or, uh, or post of residency, they are uplifted from New Guinea Islands into the Highlands, or from Highlands into the New Guinea Islands, or into Port Mosby, they're always being moved in, in this response to their call for duty. I want to say thank you to all our mobile squad members to any, in any case. Sometimes we accuse them, we complain on them, but in the middle of uh, absence of resourcing, absence of stronger support, uh, they also move at fast pace where call of duty demands them. So having said this, I just want to thank them but there are a lot of room for improvement. There are a lot of room for improvement. Our police commissioner has been given to task to ensure that our, our Royal PNC Constabulary, not just at the mobile response unit level, but the total police constabulary is stepped up to prepare to be force ready all the time for uh, call of duty. We saw in the January 10th mayhem, when one command falls down, the mayhem does take place, and that, that uh, uh, intervent lessons learned, interventions are being made to ensure uh, police don't repeat this sort of situation. Question number six, what is the state level of operation readiness for both police and military, uh, police and military properly trained and, and resourced to combat and, and attend to those operational duties? Uh, I, I think in my earlier responses, I've been able to uh, fill in some of these uh, uh, answers. I want to say, uh, substantial resources are being allocated to our police today as I speak. We'll be co-opting we'll co uh, Defence Force to work with police in terms of response to our domestic security issues going forward also. And our partnership with uh, USA in, a, in the uh, Defence Corporation, our partnership with Australia in the bilateral security agreement uh, also is meant to assist up in the upskills. Uh, question number seven, it will be unfair of me not to complete all the questions. What level of resource, finance and equipment and manpower has been expanded and deployed throughout the country and especially in Hela and Enga province? Uh, Mr. Uh, Acting Speaker, I want to ask if this uh, is, requires detailed uh, information for me. He asked this question uh, for me to look into deeper what level of resource has been deployed for special operations. If I could ask uh, this parliament, I receive the right to answer to this later. But having said this, uh, a reference made to Hela province and Anger, should I add on Southern Highlands, uh, needless to remind us, the need to protect state assets in those provinces, our economy needs them. Question number eight, what is the government overall strategy to plan to stop and end the madras and warlords infiltrating in the, in the other provinces and towns? Uh, we're working with city municipal, city authority, and like for instance in Port Mosby, our national city, uh, Capital District Commission, under the words of Governor Pakop, is introducing a Vacancy Act amendment. Uh, we work with city municipalities to ensure proper NID-based living in our city gets to be arrived upon. We know what is happening in city. We want to put safe, safe city camera uh, and to ensure that Port Mosby is safer for all of us, and we can pinpoint easily if a lawbreaker, warlord, Medra has come to the city. We can pick him up, arrest him, and uh, give him what is rightfully. Uh, uh, 
the penalties that he or she deserves. Congratulations in question number nine on uh, special ministry for uh, border security. Uh, I want to answer that we have looked at that proposal. That proposal is still there, uh, but we rather in the first instance, we are establishing with the police uh, uh, commissioner a special uh, police, uh, special elite police force unit. Uh, over 200 has been picked. They are undergoing basic training. They'll be doing advanced training for a quick response uh, to ad attend to uh, needs, and especially travel fight areas. A special police force is being assembled. They will work with the Australian Special Police Unit, trained, ready, prepared to attend to these sort of uh, uh, situations when need arise going forward.